Hello, I'm Laura Osorio and I am the curator for the Santo Domingo Centre of Excellence for Latin American Research and this is my corner. So I have a series of tooth necklaces that are all from the Amazon rainforest, from the Igara Parana region, which is now the Colombian Amazon, but at some point was the Peruvian Amazon. The reason I wanted to talk about them is because we've recently been visited by two elders from the Muro Muina or Widoto people uh, from that area, uh, Oscar Hidurjano and Alicia San Sanchez, as well as a professor from the university there called Juan Álvaro Echeverri. And uh, we've been spending some time looking at these necklaces. The necklaces are sort of ritual items, they're sort of ceremonial and important objects that were used to harness the powers of the animals that they're taken from. So these different necklaces have come from different animals um, and so are associated with different strengths. So we have uh, monkey, rodent, jaguar, and this is the tooth necklace that I particularly want to talk about because it's a necklace that came up um, as being important with our recent visitors. And this is a dolphin tooth necklace. Dolphin tooth uh, necklaces are associated with the powers of love magic. So you can actually scrape um, powder off dolphin teeth in order to make love spells. The reason for that is that dolphins are associated with the ability to transform from dolphins into people. They come out at night um, and they go to the bars and they dance. There are a number of different ways that these stories are described. Um, some of the... A more charming aspect of the story is that dolphins use different animals from the river as parts of their clothing. So they'll take an electric eel or um, a boa and convert it into a belt and wear that. They'll use catfish as their shoes, um, uh, crabs as a watch. And they have to always wear a hat because the only part of their body that they can't disguise is this uh, hole at the back of their neck. Um, so it's thought that when people come, an unknown person comes to a party at night, you should ask them to take their hat off to make sure that they're not a dolphin. Another way to make sure that a person isn't a dolphin is to wait until they get so drunk that they throw up. Um, and if they throw up whole fish, then that means that they're a dolphin. All of these um, objects are from the Igara Parana, and they were collected around the time of the rubber boom, which was from about 1900 to 1930 in the countries that are now Bolivia, Peru, Brazil, Colombia, and even Venezuela and Ecuador. Rubber extraction had been happening since the mid 19th century and was the rubber was used obviously for a growing need for cars and machines um, in the industrial world. The peoples in the Amazon rainforest that were made to work in rubber extraction, as well as some people who were actually brought in from other places like Barbados, were effectively enslaved. It, that enslavement ranged from debt peonage uh, to uh, outright torture, uh, rape and genocide. What we're effectively looking at is the hunting down of, of communities and effectively people were chained and enslaved. One of the reasons why the dolphin necklace I think is interesting in terms of the rubber boom story is because this, kind, this necklace and the narratives associated with the powers associated with river dolphins would have been relatively new to the Muro Muina or Widoto people in 1925 when this ne necklace was collected. One of the interesting aspects of the stories as they're told specifically in the Colombian Amazon and by the visitors who came uh, to see these necklaces recently is that uh, as disguised as humans, they're also disguised as white people. So they're incredibly wealthy looking, they wear perfumes, they uh, wear suits. Uh, that's what the whole idea with the, with the crab. The crab is a watch. Uh, they, are, they are Western. Uh, now, the reason for that, or one of the reasons for that, I think, is because the rubber boom not only uh, sort of splintered Amazonian society and uh, obviously resulted in the deaths of, 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 of you know, indigenous peoples, there was also, um, one of the results was actually culture contact between the bigger rivers and the communities that live along the bigger rivers and the people who live in the smaller tributaries. So La Chorera, uh, where the Muro Muina people come from, is one of these smaller tributaries. And um, they would have been unfamiliar with both dolphins, who don't often make it so far away from the big rivers, and the stories that go with them, 
uh, until the rubber boom effectively put these communities into contact. As I understand it, in different parts of the Amazon, dolphins turn into people and then will seduce you at parties, get really drunk and then vomit whole fish. Uh, for people in La Torera, the dolphins are turning into people and they're actually raping and killing people. And I think that there's, there's clearly a, uh, a transference of some of the pain associated with the rubber boom genocide to this new or slightly uh, slanted version of the dolphin uh, dolphin human story. One of the things to say about the dolphin tooth necklace, which I think is fascinating, is that when our visitors came from the Amazon recently and looked at all of these tooth necklaces, they would actually pick up uh, individual teeth um, and see whether or not the tooth had been scratched or damaged. Um, and if that was the case, which is the case uh, in all of the tooth necklaces that they looked at, um, that tooth necklace was pronounced dead. And so, um, Interestingly, the only tooth necklace that they identified as still having the living power um, that these necklaces are made to have uh, was the dolphin tooth necklace. And so uh, for that reason, it's very special and they advised us to take uh, particularly good care of it. One of the things that Oscar Heathwood Hanyo said um, when he had spent two weeks, um, you know, w with about 105, 110 uh, objects from the collection is be las cosas de mis antiguos y mis which means I saw the, th the things of my elders um, and I was healed. So yeah, I think that that's um, a beautiful sentiment and I'm happy that, that they were able to have that experience. Thank you very much for watching me talk about the teeth necklaces. And uh, if you have any other questions and want to know more about the Santa Domingo Center, then you can find it on our website. It's the Santa Domingo Center of Excellence for Latin American Research. And if you want to watch other Curators Corners, please do so here.